Uh, g'day guys. Uh, look, a fantastic week uh, in front, namely because Julia's back from the States and I got funky socks. Pretty impressed about that. Uh, we've also got funky food, uh, lots of good food. Um, and a couple of very good videos this week as well, which down below me. Um, one which is a, is a repeat from last week on blueberries. Just so happens that um, we've got blueberries on special this week, surprise, surprise. Uh, the season's sort of going to be coming to a close soon enough. And I basically wanted you to have the opportunity to gorge on blueberries before they were gone. So please take advantage of that, you'll love them. Uh, the other video is um, on pickling olives, and you'll see why soon enough. Before we go any further, I'd like to say good day to Matt. Hello, Matthew. Nice to talk to you yesterday. A uh, former Maitland boy moving out into the big world, doing wonderful things in Raymond Terrace as a social worker. It's nice to see you, Matt. Apples. Smaller pieces. We do have some larger pieces as well. Well, that size, not much bigger. Absolutely brilliant, they are on special last week, Gala. We also have, from our preferred grower now, Jonathan Apples. Again, beautiful kid size for the lunch boxes. Great varieties, a couple of late season varieties kicking in. We've got uh, Red Globes, which do have some seeds. We've also got Carmaria, and the White Grapes, which also have seeds, and we have Crimson seedless, which are the sweetest. Now I told you that these were finished. Look, there's one last little burst. They're excellent. They're uh, a little bit dearer than they were two weeks ago, but they're every bit as good. Nashy pears, pear pears have started. Crunchy crisp pears. Sensation pears. Yes, this week's special blueberries. As we all know, very high in antioxidants. A joint study undertaken by the US Department of Ag and Rutgers University and they compared non-organic and organically grown blueberries for natural fruit sugars, acids and antioxidant content. Now in, in terms of sugars, natural fruit sugars, these are good sugars. Uh, the organic had 97.06 milligrams per gram. The conventional, or shall we call it chemically grown, uh, so I think we should call it chemically grown, uh, had 79.26 milligrams. So you're looking at about, uh, well, a good solid 20-25% difference there. Now in terms of ORAC, which is an acronym for Oxygen Radical Absorbance Capacity, basically their levels as an antioxidant. High ORAC values mean that organic blueberries are better at preventing uh, the chemical oxidization that leads to cellular damage. That's a whopping 50% increase um, from the organic which basically proves as we know all along organically managed farms organically managed soils basically produce better food uh, the fruit in the numbers uh, now before we talk about our vegetables um, I would like to take the opportunity to apologize for last week's corn basically there was a price drop and I thought that there must be a corn flooding the market which they needed to move quick um, as it turned out, the corn was crap. I really am sorry for that. Um, it wasn't anywhere near what we'd hoped for, and it's not until you really open them up and have a good look inside. So look, if you have any trouble with the corn, I apologise. Please let us know. Unfortunately, the worst thing is you probably didn't get to make corn dolls. Louise is very upset about that. She was looking forward to <laughs> seeing all your corn dolls. Of course, cucumbers, we've got a few varieties of cucumbers. There's the uh, Japanese variety grown uh, by Tony, we've got the little Lebanese cucumbers and the green English cucumbers. Uh, the carrots, again, smaller sizes. We've been purposely selecting these because they're lovely and sweet. Beans don't look as good as they did last week. I've tried a few, um, they taste really nice. They're not presenting brilliantly. Locally grown also, we've got long eggplants, shallots, uh, silver beet, nice large bunches, I hope we've got plenty like that. And the celery has uh, improved. Last week we had a little bit of rust in the celery. The, the bunches are a little bit bigger and they're nice clean bunches as well. Same with the cauliflower. Cauliflower are nice large round heads. Now, we're gonna go out and film these guys pick this year, aren't we? Because mm -hmm. last year we were moving shop and it was really too hard 
it's coming up to our first anniversary, can you believe it? So we'll go out and, and film. These are freshly harvested, biodynamically grown olives, and they're grown just up the road um, at Anambar. Look for these on the front page of the website. They're uncured, so they're fresh off the tree. Basically, they're coming with a recipe, so you can cure them yourself. Uh, now, Wiz has found a very good video below, it's Australian, and uh, it's about a 10 minute video. If you're thinking about getting these, uh, she thinks it's well worth watching the video, because uh, you get some great tips on, um, on how to cure your own olives. Good exercise. The apple purees, four tubs, apple and cinnamon, apple and apricot, great special. Uh, thanks for watching, see you next week. Well, I'm standing here with uh, Tony Franklin. You know Tony? How are you? I've That's known good. you for, for, for some time now. A few years, 20 uh, so. How long have you been a, a biodynamic farmer? Uh, going on to 25 years, okay. a quarter of a century. And tell us a little bit about your space, your, your, your part of the world. Well, we live, uh, we, live we, we farm on the Comboin, which is uh, 700 metres above sea level. And uh, we have a dairy farm there originally. And now we diversified into egg production and put in free range chooks, um, which range over a uh, paddock for four acre and plus. And uh, now we're trying our hand on a uh, few veggies. A convoy is, is ideal for potato growing, so we're having to go with potato. Okay, we'll have a little look at your potatoes in a second. Uh, what, uh, way back 25 years ago, inspired you to, to take this direction? Well, I'm, I'm of Italian descent, born in Australia, mm. from Italian parents, and uh, 12 years of my youth, my youth was uh, spent in, in Italy, where um, the clock was turned back uh, 100 years, mm. and I remember my grandmother the way and the way she used to farm, and uh, it just um, was in my blood. So uh, after 25 years in business, we decided to go bush. <laughs> and didn't want to farm any other way, but uh, organic. So there was no temptation to follow the chemical None path? Whatsoever. None whatsoever. We wanted to grow things the right way by turning the clock back, like my <laughs> grandmother did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, should we have a look at your spuds? Yeah. These are Sabago potatoes. They're our first crop. And uh, most of them are kept for seeds in the winter. And we, have, uh, we are having some success, but learning. Um, the weather hasn't been uh, very good to us while we're growing these. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but we live in hope, as every other farmer does, <laughs> that hasn't got a cover over his head. <laughs> hey, what did, let's get the cucumbers. Mm. And of course, uh, these are grown by. Yeah, we grow these cucumbers, and it's our first uh, first cucumbers we ever grew. Uh, this is an original seed. They're called suyo cucumber, and they, they originated in uh, in um, China. Um, they different from any other cucumber, and that's what attracted my attention because we like to grow different things, something off the beaten track. You might yep. say. So these, like uh, from experience, these these arrive in store today. Mm -hmm. They've got a thicker skin. You don't peel them though, you just eat the whole skin there. Yes. Um, after a few days though in the fridge they can go a little bit soft, but that doesn't really doesn't. impact on the quality of the eating. No. Um, no, and of course they're uh, they're uh, low acid and uh, and bird free. Thank Thanks, you. Dave. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.